our demo of our new incident command unit that's going to be heading to Marshall County, Iowa. Um, this is a similar rig to actually another Iowa department that uh, we showed uh, a couple months ago. This unit is uh, one of our 27 foot incident commands that also has the rehab features as well. So I'm going to show you guys some of the cool features on this. This has some of our more advanced communications and command features um, that are found on some of our units, including a telescoping mask, PTZ camera with thermal, along with as you're seeing behind me is our exterior comms cabinet which is a pretty neat feature uh, on our new units. Um, this unit is going to be used for a different multitude of uh, uses in, from not only the Sheriff's Department to EMA uh, to mobile dispatch. So I'm going to give you guys a quick tour around it. Um, and again, we're working on a couple cool things here. We're inside the shop, obviously. Um, we're, again, for those who are new to JHB, we're based here in the uh, northwest suburbs of Chicago. Um, we have a variety of units from our incident commands, to confined space, fire safety. We just sent an arson investigation unit um, to Aurora, Colorado. Um, actually, just yesterday, we got an order for a drone observation unit, which is gonna be a heavy duty drone command unit for actually a large university on the East Coast. Um, so pretty excited. So yeah, let's go check this unit out. So this unit, we're gonna start on the exterior. A couple things about JHB is we've got, first of all, all aluminum construction. This has our new polycore uh, exterior. The polycore exterior is a new exterior. Most aluminum trailers up until now have used um, aluminum as the exterior. Problem is aluminum is super thin. It's 0 0.030, it's paper thin. It has a beer canning effect over time. It does not do well on in terms of hot and cold changes, um, but it also dings and dents or it does, it's pretty unforgiving. So with that, the new polycore is what you see here. It looks similar to uh, you know an aluminum trailer, but polycore is a polycarbonate substrate that's then sheeted with aluminum on both sides. One, it gives us an increase in the thermal capabilities of it for basically your insulation, but also um, it gives you a better opportunity because this thing will take things dense uh, a lot better. Um, and it's a just a much more rigid product. So this is actually what we're transitioning to on all of our units. It comes in a variety of colors, but the polycore is kind of the new future for uh, aluminum trailers and such. Aluminum, tra uh, aluminum frame from end to end. Um, this unit has all of our low voltage lighting systems along with um, our power jack system, um, power awnings. This is a one person setup. Our biggest thing on the one person setup is that we try to build everything with the Christmas Eve 2 a.m. model, right? The fact is that's when this rig is going to have to go out sometime in its life. And so it has to be that anybody can use it. Anybody could set, uh, set it up and any vehicle can tow it. This thing fully loaded is less than 8,000 pounds. That's lightweight for a 27 foot command, which means your Suburbans, Tahoes, F-150s can all tow this, which means you can get it out to an incident right away, get it set up in less than a minute. And then when you have manpower, you can then you know finish setting it up or get whatever other capabilities. Now, a couple of things that make that happen is one, the power systems, okay? We have a solar charging system on here. We have an advanced power system with a uh, high capacity inverter, converter, and automatic transfer switch. That is a 150 amp system. That allows us to run everything on this rig except the environmental. So I can't run the air conditioners and the heaters just because of the draw would suck the batteries down too fast. But that means from our lights, cameras, action for all intents and purposes, comms, I can actually be fully functional right away when I get on an incident. Now we take that a couple steps forward. Um, besides the fact that these are built with all low voltage power systems, this unit, especially with our telescoping mass, has an iPad. The iPad is pretty snazzy. First of all, I log in the iPad. The iPad goes with the rig. This iPad controls the entire trailer. Now, what's awesome about it is this iPad, I can basically control it with our app um, from any mobile device. So I can actually use my own iPhone and control everything on this trailer. Now, because this has a data network package as well, I can actually have connectivity to the trailer from anywhere in the world. So technically, Chief's out on the golf course on Friday. Let's be honest, it's real world. Um, we can actually... Uh, go ahead and he can control the trailer. Now he can also see the cameras, but if you want to mess with your crews, you can actually turn the lights on and off from anywhere, okay? Which is kind of neat. The nice thing is if I'm the operator here at two o'clock in the morning on Christmas Eve, I grab the iPad, I can go around, I can put the jacks down, I can put the awning out, okay? I can then get my setup down with a click of my click of a button, okay? And we're good to go. So one of the cool things as we walk around here, we have LED lighting. And so you have scene lighting on the on both sides. You have ground lighting around the perimeter. You have flood lighting in the back. So it's able to get you a uh, full, you know, I say this perimeter lighting around your rig for nighttime operations. As we mentioned, the power awning, 
So as we move here, one thing I forgot to mention on this. So you have not only a 40-inch uh, television on the exterior here, which is a great feature because they're smart TVs. So if I have an iPad, I can actually AirPlay or Chromecast, depending on your device, to that to share information. Now, this system has a cool another feature. This has a video matrix, okay? These are brand new in terms of communications and command. The video matrix, so if I go to video, all right, what that allows me is actually I can switch from what's showing up on this camera. So I've got this TV right now showing our thermal along with our perimeter cameras. The thermal is a PTZ that's mounted on the mast, which I'll show you guys in one second. But if I go to this, I can actually go to my exterior TV and I can switch this to, let's see, a different, uh, a different setup. It's going to switch in one second. It takes, there's a little bit of a delay. So as we kind of keep going on here, what's fascinating too is if we come back here and I'm going to walk and talk at the same time, um, the nice thing is that is also set up for communication. So you can put in um, a different interoperability radio. You can put in your different base stations. It has HDMI inputs as well. So you have that exterior workstation because again, on an incident, it's really a pain to try to pack everyone into the back of the rig, right? So this way you can actually run your incident, your briefings under the awning with lighting and stuff, you know, have your little desk and workstation. Um, you have chart, you have power there, so you can do charging of radios or other units, but it gives you that flexibility that you could be running a briefing or your incident from outside, have meeting going on in the inside, have comms going on up front. Now, as we make our way to the back, I'm going to, uh, we're going to make sure our camera lady doesn't trip and fall. That's the key thing right now. So this does have our telescoping mass system. Telescoping mass on this, okay, is a Wilbert, watch yourself, is a Wilbert telescoping mass. We switched to those because they're a uh, oil list system, which is absolutely fantastic in terms of maintenance. Now, we're up in Chicago, so you do get those cold effects on condensation and some of the other uh, mass systems. So this Wilbert is actually what we're using. This Wilbert now, we do our own custom bracket system. This is a modular bracket system. What it means is we've got them tilt the mass, the camera on there, the PTZ, along with our comms. This has a UL, uh, Unify repeater on it for Wi-Fi. Now you have comms capabilities. Now it also has, you have your green light, okay? And as I go up, I'm doing this in the touch of a button. Now you have manual controls as well, all right? Which is kind of neat. So I can control this from the iPad. So I can walk around the rig, I can go wherever. I could also, I have a workstation on the interior as well. So pretty neat. It's kind of cool, all right? As we kind of come in here and stuff, I stopped it real quick. So as we make our way to the back here, and again, I have the, the, the full capability of it. This has a thermal PTZ camera. The thermal PTZ camera is one of our camera options. So it's a dual lens camera, which allows not only for your single lens, your normals, I would say, to also your thermal. And I'll show you that on the monitor on the inside. The thermal is cool for the fact that, one, you can get heat signatures. So if you're doing a search and rescue or missing person, I can technically scan a field and look for that, that, that heat signature. It also, our, our technology allows that you can upload a database, okay, a facial recognition database. So this actually has facial recognition uh, capabilities, where if you put your own database in there, it can scan a population in a special event or high, you know, high security environment, and actually it can find the people that you're looking for. As we make our way up here, I've got, I'm going to turn these lights off because they're in my eyes, which is kind of one of the things that I love about this thing. So as we go up here, cool thing. First of all, we only do dual fuel roll-off generators. Why? Because... The one thing I hate about instant commands is the fact that we have a tendency to build our generators in the rigs. When we build our generators in the rigs, what happens then is this whole rig is vibrating, right? It's shaking. It's noisy. It's smelly. All the negatives that go along with a fixed mounted generator. So what we do is we build JHB's generator garage. It has its own garage. We roll this off, put it 25 feet away, out of sight, out of mind. That way I don't have any of those issues and they're all mitigated. Now we only do dual fuel. Why dual fuel? Because these aren't daily drivers. And so anyone who has RVs or any equipment, when you have a gas engine, right, and those gas engines sit with fuel for the, the infrequent use that we have, well, what happens? They gum up, right? They don't start at 2 o'clock in the morning on Christmas Eve. So this is dual fuel. Most of our agencies use a 20-pound uh, barbecue propane tank. They hook it up. They've got fuel. And then when they're done, it's clean. There's no residual fuel. So this will start up when I, at 2 o'clock in the morning. So pretty snazzy, um, you know, we test them before they leave. It is a 10 kW generator, okay? So you've got plenty of power for everything on here and then a little extra, all right? Little things in the back you've got, we've got our warning bars for safety. Now this rig is set up in a cool way. 
This has our exterior comfort station. The exterior comfort station has not only a fridge, microwave, and Keurig, it has storage here. This is designed for two cases of pop or water. But this way, the reason we have this on here, the exterior rehab came from a purpose of most of the rehab is always on the inside of our commands. Well, so if I'm on an incident and people just want cups of coffee to heat up or a bottle of water on a hot day, right? Everyone's got to go into my rig. And that's really disruptive to have that door open and close and open and close. So here we put all that comfort stuff on the back here. So I, one, I have a doorway to the interior, but they can come out here, they can grab a snack, grab a water, whatever it is, and not be intrusive to the command section of the units. So pretty cool feature. As we go in here, things you'll notice, first of all, this is all FRP. So the interiors of our rigs are all chemical resistant FRP, which coming out of COVID means they're cav I can use Cavicide to clean this rig, which is kind of a nice thing. It means it's more built for the what ifs of tomorrow and not just today or what we've been doing for a long time, okay? Even little things that we go along say, the spare tire, if you notice, is that waist high? It's an ergonomic spare tire. Worst thing is, is that be stuck somewhere, you got to use your spare and I've got to unbury it, right? Or, or dig it out, or I get, you know, just carrying it's a pain. This is designed that I can literally unscrew it, pull it off waist high and not break my back, okay? Let's go check out the inside. All right, so as we come on in here, this is set up is a, our, our basically our hybrid rehab, okay, and command function. So this rehab, okay, has bench seating on both sides along with removable workstations. Now you'll also notice under, store, under bench seating, okay, along with, okay, there's outlets along with not only networking outlets, but also both 110 um, that are off the solar system. So you have power at all times or the generator. So you actually have both. So you have great under, uh, under cabinet storage, but you also have the uh, ability to have power. So I can put my laptop here, pony up to the workstation, plug in, right? And I can be interfacing and we have different tab table configuration, but I can be interfacing with them. The whole command thing of facing the outside, I still don't understand, right? We're command is to be making decisions and, and communicating. So I wanna be able to talk to someone across from me and not be looking at the back of their head. Um, so these do remove and stow. So that way you can also just have this straight rehab. So if I'm sitting in here for a long-term incident, and I just need to get out of the weather, right? I just need a, a break, right? This is great because there is cushions that are in here. They're actually not in here right now, but um, this gives us the ability then to basically be able to sit here and just relax, get out of the elements, go back to the mission that we're working on. Um, you have AC in the forward and the rear. You have infrared heating. You'll notice you've got a, a large television in the rear along with the back. Now, as you guys notice this, you'll see on the cameras here, this is the thermal. So this is showing me my exterior perimeter cameras, all right, which gives me a 360 around my rig plus the thermal, okay? Now, the thermal is pretty cool. Again, I have a, I have a tablet or another controller up front, but if I click on this, okay, if you guys notice, I'm actually just touching the screen and I can control the thermal. Oh, uh, there's K. Say hi, K. Um, but I can control what's going on by just a flick of the switch through the iPad. So I'm watching from a surveillance standpoint. Pretty snazzy, and you can see the, the thermal uh, signatures going on. We've got, uh, like I said, this one also has our health safety protocols. So it's got not only um, the easy clean wall system, it's got UV disinfectant lights that are on a time system with dual backups. So both only mission or mission motion sensors along with door sensors. This one too, one of the things is, as Marshall was designing this, um, Marshall County, the front is really gonna be for dispatch. And then they wanted to make sure that they had a restroom available, just something. So we basically put it on here. They have basically our, our premium restroom here. It's bigger than an airplane bathroom, but it's not, you know, this monstrosity. But it's big enough that we have the ability that someone could use it if they need to. You've got a stainless steel sink, mirror. You do have handrails and stuff. But super simple. doesn't take up a lot of space. But, again, it gives them that capabilities out there. Last thing in the rear here, on the back, you guys noticed we had our exterior TV and our comms cabinet. This is also part of the comms cabinet where in here you have storage. But what agencies do, and this is already set up for the radios and stuff, all of your power and, and uh, coax for your antennas, okay, for your NMO connections are all coming in here. So that means they can actually put, you can put your base stations in here and then spider out to wherever you need your radios and stuff if you're using remote heads or whatever it might be. It gives you plenty of space, but the biggest thing is it gives you easy access, including on the back side of the communications cabinet on the exterior, you have full functionality or full access to the back of it through this cabinet. So that way, again, working on radios can be a pain, especially when you start mounting stuff. 
We want to make sure this stuff is easy to use so you have that flexibility going forward. All right, let's go up front. All right. As we go up front, this is uh, our uh, communications area. So this is set up with two stainless steel workstations along with the standing one here. I'm a big fan of the standing one because you're a lot of times you're moving, okay? And it's a tight space no matter what in terms of command. But this means I've got my network. I've got my CAD stick so I can plug into the network. I've got power. Our iPad actually stows right here. It's magnetic so I can have that. But then I can see the cameras, but I could be standing here, okay, at a nice, nice height, talking to whoever I need. It just adds that flexibility. Then you have two areas that people can actually sit. When they sit, they have not only their own monitor, they have their networking set up, but the other thing it touches, it goes to the touchpad where they can, we can send the signal with this video matrix to any TV around the unit. So if workstation one is running an incident and they've got maps up, they can send their map and we can put it on the exterior TV, the back TV, whatever it is. It allows you to share information in that next level. So that way we're not fumbling around and wasting time. Um, there's storage up here. You've got storage as well, okay? We've got our custom network rack. The network rack is another thing. This whole network rack pulls out. Well, what's fascinating too is one of the biggest pains is with network racks and toms is they're usually fixed mounted. So you have to take out the device. You got to take out your ports or whatever. This whole rack, okay, just pulls out so I can access the back of it. So I have 360 around it for easy maintenance, but easy addition. Now that goes, we take that a step further. Our, we're the only guys that came up with the fact that here's a, here's a, the only thing I will bet on in life. There is a guarantee that when I put comms on a command unit and I drill a hole, right? And then I you know, put my antenna up there and then put a bunch of goop over it. What's going to happen? Water will find its way sometime over its life. It's just a fact. So what we did is we said, all right, let's stop that. So we have a floating uh, roof bracket system, okay? And non-penetrating, which means the hardware is only mounted on the sides. That means there is no holes in the roof except for the air conditioner and one entry point. That one entry point, which is behind me, or in front of me, I should say, means that I can get to every wire coming on my roof through one access point. I don't have to find stuff, but also if I want to add radios, change out antennas down the road, it's super easy because I have an access to it from point A to point B. That's one of the key things. That little, Those little things where the solar is and that non-penetrating roof mount system makes all the difference in that long-term use. Now, you have controls up here for only the lights and stuff, all right? You've got interior lights, exterior lights, as I'm turning them on. Now, on the tablet, one other thing we did in this unit. If I open this up, I've got my very secret password of one, two, three, four. But if I go to the here and I actually turn off the lights, we've got reds, okay, for nighttime operations. It just allows that softness, right, when I'm running at night where I don't need to have the, the, the bright LEDs. So you do have reds throughout the rig for nighttime operations as well. Um, this has a power jack system, as we already mentioned, the power awnings. So, um, pretty straightforward that all the TVs are smart TVs, so you can cast to them or airplay to any of them, okay? Um, and again, the matrix right now is just connected to the various uh, TVs. This also has a TV tuner. So if you're running an incident, say Iowa, tornadoes, they can put up the local news feed and put it on each monitor or whatever they want. So it gives them that flexibility as well. So this again is a 27 foot incident command and rehab unit that's going to Marshall County, Iowa. Um, I welcome any questions and stuff. Um, yeah. Is there any questions out there? All right. If not, guys, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Oh, what's that? Yeah. Good. Oh, excellent. The question was, is there water on board? So here's a couple things that we do different. The water is on board. All right. We have a dual tank system. So behind me right here actually is our plumbing cabinet. One thing we do is our with our efficiency of our units, we don't need a big 100-gallon tank on here for a bathroom. That's crazy. So you have, first of all, your water tanks, your fresh water tanks are mounted right here inside the rig. That way, <clears throat> they minimize the freeze issues, right? So if you're going to use this year-round, um, number one thing, you still have to winterize it, but you still have access where you're not, your tanks aren't going to freeze if they're belly mounted. One of our differences here. So you do have water on here. You do have your, your single tank because it's just a toilet sink, so it's one black tank underneath. Um, just like an RV and stuff like that. Easy access. It is a on-demand hot water heater. Again, for that winterization factor, the on-demand means that, hey, you turn it on, it's, it'll just give you hot water when you need it, but you don't have to have like the five-gallon style tank that's always full, which will blow out eventually from freeze issues. Okay. Um, yeah. If there's no other questions, we appreciate you guys taking it. We're going to do an, ah, cost of the unit. 
All right, so cost, I, and I appreciate my staff that's helping out. I've got the headphones in, so I, I don't see the questions. Okay, so first thing, um, time for delivery. I tell you this, and this is a no BS. Right now, we're all, everyone's trying to buy rigs right now, fire apparatus and stuff, and they're telling us two or three years, which I'm like, this crazy town, right? Um, who knows what's going to be in two or three years, what we need. Here's the thing. We know we need these now. So right now, we have a six to eight month lead time on our units, and that's no BS. Okay, we work very hard to make sure we hit those goals, but at the same time, we don't overpromise and underdeliver any time. We will tell you no on certain design features, but we also only offer two sizes. We offer the 23 or the 27. That's the only things we offer. Um, we only offer aluminum. You know, all of ours are V-nose because again, in the nose here, under here on the exterior is where all of the jazz is, all of the guts of the electronics and stuff for the trailer. So it's, it, we try to use every space as efficient as possible. The cost on these, um, on the lower end, you're, low one, you're about 120, 130,000, upwards of 200,000, depending if you have the mass and the matrix and all the jazz, so to speak. Um, super affordable in the command space right now. Now, I will tell you, just so everyone knows, we're, we've just launched um, a new version. So we've taken the command rehab that you see here. And we've now gone a little to crazy town, but it's already, we've already sold one, um, is we have our command hauler. The command hauler, okay, has come in because we now have that rear space where we can actually put in an ATV or side-by-side -side and have that command rehab uh, functionality. Something new, but again, for those departments that are trying to have that versatile tool. Warranty. Warranty. So we do a couple things. You have a one-year end-to-end, okay, um, on everything inside the rig, and then you have a five-year on the frame. Here's our biggest thing, Okay. Trailer companies, we do not consider ours a trailer company. Okay, we are more an innovation and solutions company because trailers, for the most part, for those of you who have RVs and stuff, it's junk. It really is. And that's why we only build for police, fire, military, and health agencies. We don't build car haulers. We don't build landscape. We only build these very specific units. With that, we're not in the repair business. Okay, it costs us more to have to stop production or bring that in to fix something. So that's why we don't bring units back because we build them quality first. And that's one of our biggest goals. And you can talk to any one of our customers and that's what we stand by to this day. And that's what separates us out from a lot of the other ones. You know, we kind of have a no BS attitude. It's not to be that arrogance of me being a retired firefighter, but that's just the truth. Okay. Um, we pride ourselves on that. Any other questions? No? Cool. We, again, we appreciate that. Um, we will, for those who are on here, um, like I said, we'll get you guys some info on the command hauler that we're working on. We have a very special, I'll throw the teaser out there. We are going to be at FRI, okay, Fire Rescue International, in Kansas City in the middle of August. Um, it is our first big show that we've done this year. Um, we are going to be debuting a new command version, uh, a smaller kind of edgier version of this that's going to turn some heads. So we are always looking for new ideas. If you have something you're looking for your department, okay, um, the command hauler is kind of an evolution of that as an example. But the new one, I'm not going to mention any more about it. But you guys are, it's going to uh, be pretty cool when we're excited to have that. So thank you guys for joining us today. Again, this is Chris Gantz with JHB Group. And again, this is the 27-foot instant command trailer that's going to Marshall County, Iowa. Have a great day, guys. Stay safe out there.